well, I think it's very important to think about technological sovereignty in many ways, be it considering um, the power of certain tech companies, um, the power they hold in shaping the public and political discourse, be it in terms of government surveillance. Um, when I look at my own work, things that come to my mind in terms of sovereignty are very much connected to the questions um, addressing the social field of labor. On the one hand, digital technologies enable companies today to outsource many tasks via crowdsourcing platforms, for example, um, which really wasn't possible to this degree um, just a few years ago. They enforce global competition for labor and in this way also put pressure on workers who are only potentially um, object to crowdsourcing. Uh, on the other hand, there are many new digital tools which are applied in attempts to foster control at work and which undermine workers' autonomy. We see this in many places, be it industrial companies, be it uh, logistics and distribution, e-commerce or even programming. In my view, this brings uh, questions back to the agenda which have been connected to the development and regulation of work from very, for a very, very long time but which were not so high up on the agenda for a while. Um, the struggle really, to me, seems to be about individual autonomy in terms of people's daily lives at work and in terms of the persistence of labor rights and standards. Um, you know, in, in the legacy of someone like T.H. Marshall, many researchers in uh, labor studies talk about rights at work at the, as a fourth pillar of modern citizenship um, besides civic, political and, and social rights, of course. Um, and I think it could be that we will see a comeback of struggles evolving around such a kind of topic. Such struggles then would be pretty conventional in the sense that they would have to be about a combination of union-like self-organizing and political regulation. I think we have to think about problems created by digitization and contradictions of digital capitalism at least in three ways. Um, first, there is the question if digital technologies have the potential to stimulate economic growth in significant ways. Some people are very optimistic about it, others are rather pessimistic. But everybody thinking on this topic is thinking about whether digital technologies will actually deliver growth in labor productivity. And I just think we first of all have to understand what the major economic successes of leading digital corporations in the last, say, two decades have been. In my eyes, the, the real novelties um, have in large parts been taking place in the area of consumption, not in the area of production. Think of e-commerce giants like Amazon or advertisement kings like Google and Facebook. The economic promise of their business models is really to boost consumption, not production. This is, I think, particularly interesting as the same kind of companies have developed technologies of labor regulation and control that systematically undermine private demand by putting pressure on wages and substituting human labor with algorithms and machines. So, uh, in my eyes, this should at least foster skepticism about the real uh, potentials of economic growth connected to digitization. Second, as I already said, uh, question of, questions of labor rights come back to the agenda and maybe even have to, uh, we even have to question labor market participation as a dominant form of social integration of, in uh, societies of our kind. Third, this dynamic could bring uh, struggles over the adaption of the welfare state to the agenda, I think, especially in Europe where uh, we consider rights of social welfare a very important part of uh, our social systems. And uh, the question is whether the welfare state will actually adapt to a slow or even post-growth economy in the way of lowering social security parallel to certain tendencies of the degradation of labor or if there will be new policies of social inclusion.
Well, I see Industry 4.0 first of all as a strategic initiative to, to give a new digital shape to German-based industrial companies. This initiative is carried by somehow a loose alliance of companies, labor unions, research institutions and rather powerful political agents. Um, so far it looks like Industry 4.0 will lead to a rather incremental renewal of German manufacturing. It is, however, a signal to the world markets that German manufacturing is transforming systematically. In this way, um, it appears to work as a kind of merchandising campaign for Germany's export industry. Um, it also, as you mentioned, relates to, to debates about Silicon Valley style capitalism in the way that it suggests that the digitized economy is not only about controlling the consumer end of the market, but also about the whole system of production, saying manufacturing still matters, right? Um, it remains to be seen if this will be a serious alternative to Silicon Valley style capitalism. I think it's somehow too early to tell. Um, considering conflicts, well, of course US-based manufacturing isn't sleeping on this development. Uh, General Electric, for example, strongly pushes an agenda quite similar to what people discuss as Industry 4.0. But, of course, there has always been uh, competition between companies like General Electric and, let's say, Siemens or, or SAP. Um, the question, I think, really is whether this kind of competition will take a different shape as such companies attempt to control the standards of software produ production and as their businesses become increasingly digitized. Because if these markets turn out to be winner-takes-all markets in the way many digital markets are, then we could see uh, really a stronger logic of conflict. Governments would then surely be pushed towards facilitating the control of certain markets for their own companies, right? Um, such a form of geopolitics, you could probably call it, to me, um, seems like a real possibility at least in the age of maybe a new protectionism which uh, seems to be knocking at our doors right now.